Welcome to CR Nuts Motorsports. My name is Ken. Glad you're here. Today is a very technical uh, episode and it concerns an issue that we have been struggling with for four weeks and that is starting up the bad kitty. Uh, the sniper was given us, uh, the fuel injection unit, was giving us issues and I could not find another video that covered this and read, did tons of research, read lots of articles, manuals, looked at every video I could find and I could not find this issue and this is what this video is about. So it's kind of technical minded and I hope if you're watching this that you uh, that you can learn something from this because it took us four weekends to figure it out and a lot of research. But there's a resolution and it's really not that bad. It's just nobody pointed us in the right direction. And I'm saying people were helpful. They were very helpful. But they just didn't hit the nail on the head. So here's where we're going. Holly, sniper, great unit. Got one on the Oldsmobile, runs perfectly. Made that car, totally new car. It's just amazing what it does. Bought it specifically on this engine from Blueprint Engines, okay? I paid the extra money and it gives you more horsepower and better fuel economy starts in every condition great when you have an issue you're going to be asked certain questions and i'm going to prepare you for this they're going to ask you about the electrics number one ground and power you've got to be straight to the battery there's they virtually will not give you the time of day if you're not if you jumped into your fuse box or you just grounded it to the dashboard uh, -uh that's not going to cut it. They have to be totally clean. They're very picky about this. I'm not a computer wizard, but apparently that's the way it's got to be. And I was fortunate. I did that. I run a number six from the battery in the back of the car all the way up front. Just number six gauge. Just to make sure I had clean source of power. Okay, there's no interruptions other than a 120 mega fuse. So that's as clean as you can get. The ground is straight to the battery, all right? Not a problem. So cross it at all, list. Fuel pressure. You've got to be 60, 65 pounds fuel pressure feeding into the carburetor, okay? The return line should be putting out approximately four pounds of pressure. Put a gauge on the side of the carburetor. It's not hard to do, it's easy. The Summit gauge, they're liquid filled, it goes up to 100 pounds, 22 bucks, and the adapter for it, five bucks. Put it on. Because Holly's gonna say, what's your fuel pressure? And you need to be able to tell them. You, say, you can say, well, the pump's running. Yeah, that doesn't cut it. And I'll tell you why. The fuel sending unit on the original tank, this 1967 Cougar, comes out of the tank and immediately takes a 90 degree and goes straight up. So you can run the fuel line up over the axle down. Holly supplied came with the kit, a fuel pump. And the fuel pump is, as they term it, is a pusher, not a puller. So it wants to be on the same level as the fuel tank. And if you expect it to pull up and over, it will do it, but it will not do it well and it will not last long. It's not the way that pump was designed. It's designed to be on the same level. So I learned that the hard way because we only had 20 pounds of fuel pressure and fuel sending unit out multiple times. And I cut it off and I fed straight out. And then I it is slope. I went up so I can get over the axle. Bingo, solved the problem. I got 65 pounds of pressure now. And I can tell it because I put the gauge on it. So spend the 25 bucks, buy the gauge, because it will solve a lot of problems. If you've got fuel pressure problems, it won't run at 20 pounds. It won't run at 40. You need 65. That's when the injectors work. So, and I'm going to end up re-plumbing the original gas tank with uh, A&N fuel line, six gauge, number six A&N fuel line. 
and I'm going to do it so it feeds straight out. But I'm, I'm going to take it over the axle, but I'm just going to do it gently. Okay, instead of, I've read an article where they say if you have a 90 degree in your fuel line, it's like adding six feet of length to the hose. It's asking it to work that much harder. And then on this car, that was a problem. O2 sensor. This is what screwed me. And it's semantics, I suppose. Headers. They all come together at a collection point, okay? That is where all four come together, and it's you know, three and a half inches in diameter. And generally, it goes down to three-inch exhaust to the flange. And the flange is called the collection flange. That's where my mistake was. Holly is very specific in their instructions. They say they want the O2 sensor six to eight inches past towards the exhaust, past the collection, or as they call it, collector. I thought that was the collection flange. So I went six or eight inches past the flange. Ah, uh, too far. Screwed up my O2 sensor reading. Kicked my ass for two weekends. So when you got that collection point, go six to eight inches past that point, all right? And to be honest, I started looking really closely at a lot of videos, even engine masters, and they have their O2 sensor coming straight down to a uh, horizontal pipe. And it's only like two inches past the collection point. So I, and talking to Ollie, they say, you don't want to be too close because you'll just pick up the reading from one cylinder. So you want to be a little bit past it. And I don't think the 68 inches is life or death. I mean, I bet you, you could be four, you'd be fine. You don't want to be any further than eight, but you want to be past the initial collection point where they all feed together. That's what screwed me. And to prove it, what I did is I went from the passenger side where I had a bung installed when the exhaust was put in, in the wrong place. I moved it to the driver's side. And the driver's side, it's almost like, a, on this car, it's almost like a shorty header. You have the collection point, and immediately there's a flange, and then the exhaust pipe goes down. So I put it straight into it, about four inches past that collection point. Bingo! Perfect. Now, how did I know I had this problem? AR reading. On the Holly gauge, when you turn on the key, and this is something that I didn't pay attention to on the white car, the old 442. Holly very specifically says, you wait two and a half seconds, and you will hear the fuel pump energize, and the screen light up on the Holly display. And it takes two and a half seconds. Also in that two and a half seconds, there is a squirt of gas, a prime shot, given to the engine. So when you hit the key, bingo, it'll fire immediately. If you hit the key too soon, it'll take longer to start the car. It will kick over, it'll crank over, you know, uh, 10 seconds, and then kick. So be patient. Turn on the key, wait two and a half seconds. You'll hear it. You'll hear the pump running, and I can hear it pressurizing. And all of a sudden, it, it will cut off because it's hit its pressure. Lesson learned there. So, take your time about that. And, you know, turn on the key, let everything come to life. When we started the car, the car ran, ran terribly, but the AR reading was in red. The background turned red, and the reading was 35.6. That's a default reading, and that's a, you're way too lean. It's reading too much oxygen. And so I, not knowing what's going on, don't want to hurt the engine. You rev it up a little bit, and it would drop. So it'll, it'll drop down maybe 18, maybe 29. It's jumping all over the place. But you let it come to an idle again, it's at 35.6. And it's running terrible. In a recent trial, because it's reading too much oxygen. So it thinks it doesn't have enough gas. The computer says you're starving. Pump everything you can. So all the injectors are open 
full wide and is flooding out the engine. Runs like crap. I can tell you about that. I know that. Because I had the O2 sensor in the wrong place. It was too far downstream picking up too much oxygen. But there was one more problem. Because we initially, okay, we saw the AR problem, but the car still didn't run good. And that was this. Initially, I had called Blueprint Engines and said, man, I'm having problems. I'm, you know, this thing's kicking my butt. And we went back and forth, and they say, do this and do that and look at this and ask me all the questions. And they were very helpful, very nice. So they said, listen, we're going to send you a brand new sniper unit in the box, brand new, and put that on and just see if it makes a difference. Thank you. It comes here, get it in, in three days. Uh, put it on. Had the same issues, okay? With that new unit on, we moved the O2 sensor. AR problem was fixed, but the car still ran like crap. This is something else both Blueprint and Holly told me. Look, take off the air cleaner. Look and see what score. You should have four injectors squirt. If you don't have four, if you have less than four, something's wrong. And the unit needs to be fixed. Take off the air cleaner, look at it. That new unit was only two injectors, and you'll see the footage. Okay, car ran like crap. What am I going to do? This is a replacement unit. I got only one choice. I put the original unit back on. So I got the new position for the AR sensor. That's working. And now I put the old unit on, which I knew at one time worked perfectly because the car was dynoed with it. Put it on, voila. It's a beast. And the car runs perfect, purrs like a kitten. Can't ask for better. Okay? I still need to set the IAC and get that nailed in. And I, uh, the timing, I know I'm really close. I need to fine-tune that. But what happens when those injectors, if only two are working, or I guess even less, or maybe one's not working, Holly says they have to tear them apart, and they come uh, disconnected. It happens sometimes. Not often, they say, but it happens sometimes. And they themselves have to tear it apart. So you have to send the unit back, and they'll fix it, and they'll send it back to you. So I had two problems. One, I screwed up the placement of the O2 sensor. And, you know, I'm not blaming anybody for that. The instructions could be a little bit clearer, but my problem. Number two, the second unit, I just never thought to look. Once I looked, I realized I had a problem. Went back to the first one, it's working perfect. So it took me four weekends to figure this out, plus 20 hours of research. But so I don't want you to go through this problem. If you're watching this video, you're doing it for a reason. If you're having any of these problems, this is how, what you need to look for, and you can knock it out. And, and, and not take four weekends, you can do this in a day. So that's why we did this, and then you'll see the video, and I'll put pieces in this clip. But I'm just trying to help out somebody else who has this problem. And uh, I learned a lot. I'm much smarter about it. I know more about snipers and I really care too. But it's something I'm glad I learned and uh, I hope I can help you. So with that, if you uh, like what you see, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Enjoy.
Oh yeah, all four squirts. All four squirted. Thank you.